So Ron, we're just about to enter the Pinocchio exhibit and outside here are a bunch of pizza boxes and I thought this was like a comment on Andy Warhol, to be fair. <laughs> but it's not. This is actually part of the animation process from Pinocchio. Yeah, I mean, they just buy a lot of empty pizza boxes. So this these is are, how they... Yes, these are actual pizza boxes. From or, production. Ordered off the shelf from someplace. <laughs> used to store used, thousands and thousands of priceless priceless yeah. Pinocchio heads. The 3D uh, Pinocchio heads. And if you look at the side of the box, you can see it says oh, yeah. whatever the expression is that that box contains. Frown expression mouth number, number 17. 17. That's that one. There are 170 heads apparently made for the Pinocchio character. And they're stored in these boxes in this way. On, you know, like in bakery racks. Oh, well, like an studio. actual pizza rack. Yeah, so you can see the edge of whatever the mouth thing is on the side when you look at the, the rack. And I noticed that uh, We've got some filing systems, like there's pit, little notes inside. Yeah, when they remove a head to go to the animation the set, they put a little note inside and make a note of where it's gone. Oh, so this is the this is the deep filing system for storage, yes. and yeah. then different sets of expressions will be pulled out for an animator. Yeah, an animator would order up the expression he wanted to use that day. <laughs> wow. They transfer it into a smaller black box and deliver it to the yeah. animated set. Was production surprised you wanted to put the pizza boxes in vitrines? Yeah, they were to some degree, but I, I did think of Andy Warhol. I said, you know, this it's going to feel, it should feel good here. These right feel, this feels perfectly natural here. Yeah, I, I, as I said, I want the installation to resonate with the other art that's in the museum, even though it's production art. It really does. I mean, that's, I, it, in a way, it sort of set the tone for me when I got, when the penny dropped and I realized that you're commenting on the whole history of this amazing building. Yeah, and yeah. everyone, Pizza, everyone's going to come up to for pizza. Yeah. <laughs> right, a film crew runs about 40% yeah. <laughs> on pizza. <laughs> I'm not sure people realize, but each one of these faces, they understand is a different expression, but that someone had to paint every single one perfectly with every mark and scratch and ding and yes. dot. Yes. So that there's no flashing between yeah. them. And they have a 3D printer in the studio. Yeah. Which we didn't see working, but they can make, make the heads as needed. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Ron, this is an amazing um, anatomy of a stop motion animation puppet in a couple of different styles. Can yes. you walk me through this? Yeah, I mean, this is a puppet that's animated with the armature that's inside the face. And these puppets require armatures, they require costume designers, they require a makeup artist to do the makeup on the face. They're like real actors. They were very excited to tell us about Spazzatura's pants. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes, that his pants, it spent a lot of time in his pants for some reason, cutting just the right kinds of stripes. And, and while uh, uh, Pinocchio was replacement animation on his face, the humans in the movie are not replacement animation. They're mm -hmm. silicone. Yeah, yes. they're soft silicone that can be manipulated physically. And those are the puppets that really required a lot of hospitalization uh, after because... a scene was shot. <laughs> well, so you cut one in half. Yes, and... that was actually Guillermo's suggestion. Really? Cut, one, cut Bope in half, he said. So, so that was specifically done for the exhibition. So you could see oh, the mechanism. Man. It's Look at, so there's movers for the lips, for the teeth, for the eyes, eyebrows, eyelids, armature in his hair, and the, the, the little holes in that would have been to catch to hold on to the silicone. And then that's this whole body armature is skeleton. I, I just always think of the armatures as such pieces of jewelry. What people don't even see is that they've been machined to such a finery so that each animator has a different level of pressure they like in the armature. I feel like when Guillermo says we should cut Volpe in half, I think what he almost wants is to inspire a new generation of, amateur, of, of armature makers, puppet makers, and animators. Yeah, I think so. Because I mean, that's, that's what this does to me. It, like, it makes me want to put my hands in it. Me too. <laughs> And then these are Spazzatura's mouths. Yes, there's a replacement mouth. You can see the different expressions of anger and giving the raspberry, some oh of them. My God. I see some 3D printing process. There's magnets in each one, so they fit exactly. Yes, and they have numbers on them. Um, wow. They're really muscles. Oh my gosh. And as you know, there are boxes of those faces. We just wrapped a handful. It's just come <laughs> and so And then made a selection cool. for the expressions.
You've got an old and new Geppetto. I didn't realize that. Yeah, you can see it from the, the hair. The older and the younger. <laughs> I mean, for most of us, he looks old all the time. Yes, but, yeah. Um, but the hairline tells you that's old. The old fellow is in pajamas. Yes. In his night dress. And they talk about his hands. Look at his hands. Yeah. He's a, a, a wood a, a craftsman. His hands are very gnarled and yeah. worn because he's been carving all his life. So those kinds of details are something you wouldn't actually grasp in the film much but they actually helped the animator animate the character and i knew a master puppeteer marionette puppeteer many years ago and his hands look looked exactly like, like that exactly like that yeah i really appreciate the scope of this exhibit and i mean these puppets i really seriously think you're 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 gonna inspire a few animators uh to jump into the industry Thanks. And I, again, I love the mounting, the rigging they've done for, to put, display these puppets. Yes. <laughs> um, so you really see that everybody has to be anchored. Yeah. And, and you know, when I'm installing it, I'm thinking about the same thing, how these puppets speak to each other through the vitrines. Oh, right. Yes, of that. course. Easy. Yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs>